If you haven't done so yet, pause the video and reread the problem before listening on. We have a spherical conducting shell, and on the outer surface, we have a charge of negative 14 microcoulombs. So we have labeled the negative charge on the outer surface of our spherical shell. And then we also have some charge on the inner surface. Now we've labeled that positive, but we're gonna prove why that is positive in just a moment. And in fact, our first task is to find that inner charge on the shell. So we've called that Q in, and our goal right now is to find that. Now that won't be too bad because the question tells us very importantly here that the net charge on the entire shell is negative 10 microcoulombs. So for the net charge, we could say Q net, and that would represent the entire charge on both the inner and outer surface of the shell. So that's going to equal the Q out plus the Q in. So that's simply a statement that the net charge on the sphere has to equal the total charge on the outer and inner surfaces. And so we know the net charge. They told us that that was negative 10 microcoulombs, so we could fill that in. We know the outer charge is negative 14 microcoulombs, and then we're going to add that to this unknown Q in. And you can see how easy it is to solve for the Q in, or the charge on the inner surface of the conducting shell, because if we just add 14 to both sides, we can see that 4 microcoulombs is going to be the charge on the inner surface of this conducting shell. So that is the correct answer for part A. Q in is 4 microcoulombs. But next we move on to part B, and on the hollow interior of our spherical shell, we have this particle here. We've called that particle Q. We've labeled it negative. It will turn out to be negative, but for now, we have to assume we don't know that. So we don't know what the charge Q is on the hollow of our conducting shell. We're going to find out. And in order to find out, we're going to apply Gauss's law. And when you apply Gauss's law, what you have to do is select a Gaussian surface. Now, in this case, we have a spherical conducting shell, so it's going to make logical sense to use a spherical Gaussian surface. They sometimes call it a Gaussian sphere or even a G-sphere. And now our next task, once we've selected our Gaussian surface, is to situate that surface. So where to put that surface? Now, what we're going to do in this problem is we're going to actually draw our Gaussian sphere using a dotted line placed on the inside of this sort of thin region of the conducting shell. So we're going to draw, again, this Gaussian sphere on the inside of the conducting shell. And you might wonder, well, why? Why would we draw it on the inside? Well, it turns out that on the inside of the conducting shell, the electric field on the inside of the shell is going to equal zero newtons per coulomb. Now, we can argue why that would be. Why would the electric field on the inside of the conducting shell be zero? Well, you can answer that by considering the opposite case. Let's imagine for a moment that it wasn't zero. Well, if the electric field wasn't zero on the inside of the conductor, then that electric field that's present there would start exerting electric forces on the charges. So all of the conducting electrons inside the spherical shell would start experiencing an electric force and they'd start flowing. We would actually get this sort of perpetual current flowing through the conducting shell as the result of that electric field. But of course, there is no such perpetual current pushing charges along on the inside of the spherical conducting shell. And since there is no perpetual current, there cannot be an electric field on the inside. So that's the argument that sort of proves, if you will, that the electric field on the inside is zero. Now, how does that help us? Well, let's take a look at the mathematical statement of Gauss's law. And voila, here it is. It looks a little intimidating at first, but in this case, it's fairly easy to apply because, again, the electric field inside our Gaussian surface is zero. So this integral on the left side of the equation would become zero because the electric field right there is indeed zero. So this means that the Q enclosed, which is the total charge enclosed within our Gaussian sphere, has to equal zero. Well, look carefully at the picture and ask yourself, well, what charges are enclosed within the Gaussian sphere? Hopefully you can see that the charge enclosed inside the Gaussian sphere is this positive charge here, what we called Q inner. That was the positive charge residing on the inside of the conducting shell. So that's going to be part of the Q enclosed. We would have Q in. But of course, we also have this little charge located on the hollow of the sphere. That little charge is located inside the Gaussian sphere. So we're going to add that charge to our Q enclosed term as well. Well, this is great because we already know the value of Q in. We figured that out in part A of the question. We can scroll back up. It was four microcoulombs. So we're going to fill that in for Q in. 
And then it's a very simple matter, isn't it, to solve for Q. We just subtract the four microcoulombs from both sides, and we can see that Q is going to equal negative four microcoulombs. So that's the answer for part B. That's the amount of charge located on that little charge that was placed on the hollow of our conducting shell.